Welcome to another episode of Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. We take you to a sighting location in the Blue Mountains of Washington. This Bigfoot sighting happened when a father and son hunting along the Walla Walla Mill Creek watershed on the intake trail between Green Peak and Lewis Peak. The sighting occurred on an open rocky face within about a quarter of a mile of Lewis Peak just before leaving the National Forest boundary. The son on the father and son hunting team is who made the report. His report goes as follows. My dad got drawn for a big bull elk permit in the Mill Creek watershed. He harvested a bull on November 1st off of Green Peak. We were packing out the meat on Tuesday, November 4th in the late afternoon. This was the fall of 2003. We were taking our time following the trail back to Lewis Peak. There was about an hour of light left. We stopped at a rock outcropping to take a breather when I saw motion out of the corner of my eye. I told my dad that there was something coming across the opening we had just previously crossed. I was not sure what it was as it had moved behind a tree. As it continued across the ridge, I noted that the animal was walking on two legs. The distance from where we were to the animal was approximately 500 yards. It was very clearly a biped. We are very experienced hunters, 20 plus years for me, 40 plus years for my dad, with a lot of time in the field. We have harvested many, many deer, elk, and bear. This animal walked upright and very quickly covered the distance across the opening. This clearing was very steep. It had loose shell all over the trail. The trail was covered with packed snow from foot and horse traffic and was very slippery in the cold weather. We had just crossed it and had to take our time with the backpacks to make sure we did not slip. The animal crossed this opening very quickly with no apparent difficulty whatsoever. It appeared to be approximately seven to eight feet tall and very dark from head to toe. It did look our direction, but did not stop to observe us. After a quick debate about what the heck we had just seen, noting that we were not carrying firearms at the time, and it was heading in our direction, we had two loads of elk parts on our packs, so we quickly left the area. I watched the trail as my dad tied the packs to the four-wheeler, but I did not see anything coming down the trail. Hiking through this area for several days, we noticed an odd smell that was not very familiar to any of the animal species we regularly encounter in this area. Our sighting happened in the late afternoon, just about an hour or so before dusk. The Walla Walla Mill Creek watershed is a large area. It's closed to public access except for one week out of the year, when 40 elk hunters selected by state game department are allowed entry by a special forest service permit. The permit holder may bring one other person in with them after they have harvested an animal to assist with the removal of the animal. The area is heavily wooded, extremely steep and rugged terrain with numerous water sources and natural grasses interspersed across some open hillsides. The watershed functions as a large funnel supplying water for the city of Walla Walla. The upper perimeter has a semi-maintained trail and there are several less than maintained trails that run through the watershed. At the time of the siding there was snow on the ground and conditions were slippery. Weather was below freezing, partly cloudy, and there was periodic snow showers. The hike from Lewis Peak to Green Peak takes about one and a half to two hours depending on the pace. There is some public land surrounding parts of the watershed, however neither of these peaks have good public access points. 
the PFRO investigator that spoke with the witnesses did not leave his name on the report. Here is a breakdown of the conversation in the interview. The witness was with his father at the time of the sighting. His father had downed a bull elk that morning, and they were in the process of packing the animal out. They had to make four trips to pack the animal out, about a three-hour backpack trip to the truck. They were on their third and last trip of that day. They had driven the witness's truck to a point and then used an ATV to get to Lewis Peak. Permission was needed from the landowner to use the area for travel, and then it was another three-hour hike to where the elk was harvested, the slopes being up to 70% grade. They were walking back to the ATV and just crossed an open area on an icy steep shell slope, and the witness looked back at the area they had just crossed. Approximately 500 yards away, he seen a dark figure about seven feet in height and moving very fast across the same slope that took them many minutes to cross. Because they had another 20 minutes to pack and another half hour of daylight, the witness could not look for tracks. The witness and his father were not the only ones using that area for hunting. There were other hunters, some with horses, in the same area. When they went back the next day to retrieve the rest of the elk, he looked for tracks, but because of other traffic in the area and limited time to pack the animal out, there was not enough time to completely search the area for tracks. When they arrived where the elk was down, they had noticed tracks in the snow, and the elk had been partially eaten. They had recognized the tracks of a bear. It appeared that this bear had finished the best cuts of the elk that were left behind and partially buried the rest of it as if it was coming back later to finish it. At no time after the sighting did the witness feel any different, only after seeing that a bear had fed on their elk. There was no feeling of being watched, even when they returned the next day. There was a, an abundant source of game in the area, and from the rifle shots heard in the area, other hunters were downing elk, and the bear was still feeding. The witnesses have a number of years hunting in that area and are very comfortable in the being in the outdoors, hunting, fishing, biking. They will continue to hunt the area, and this sighting of the dark biped will not deter them from the area. Personally, being here myself, the area is very squatchy, and it is abundant with Bigfoot sightings. We're visiting a dozen or more Bigfoot sightings in the area, including the famous Paul Freeman Bigfoot sighting, where he actually filmed a couple of Bigfoot. One of the Bigfoot really stands out, but a lot of people that have broke down the footage claim that there's one or two other Bigfoots in the frame of the video. The first time I seen the Paul Freeman Bigfoot video over 10 years ago, my gut instinct told me that this was a real animal and it wasn't a guy in a monkey suit. The way the neck come out from the center of the chest was just very unusual and my gut feeling it was real. A lot of people did not take it seriously until Dr. Meldrum took a look at the casts made of the footprints during uh, the time of the filming. Dr. Meldrum authenticated the casts as coming from a real animal dermal ridges. Um, he's the expert on primates, uh, locomotion, bipedalism. So uh, it got a lot of attention after he authenticated it. And I was happy to see that footage get the recognition it deserves. The Blue Mountains is another Bigfoot sighting hotspot in the United States. The Blue Mountains uh, go from Oregon to Washington, both sides of the border are just full of Bigfoot sighting reports. We really love the area. We're going to continue to return and search for Bigfoot. I hope you enjoyed this Bigfoot sighting report on location as close as we could get to the actual Bigfoot sighting. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching.